At our number 10 spot, we have almost had a war over a tree. Two US Army officers named Captain Arthur Boniface and First Lieutenant Mark Barrett were axed and butchered until they passed from North Koreans while trying to trim a tree in the DMZ. This would later be known as the Korean axe murder incident. The tree was blocking a checkpoint view, which is why the US decided to chop it in the first place. As you would expect, when the US caught wind that the soldiers passed away in a foreign country, they quickly took action. They created Operation Paul Bunyan, which is named after a mythical lumberjack from North American lore. The operation was very simple. Go to the DMZ and chop it down, except they came with a little few friends of their own. This included hundreds of soldiers armed with machine guns, grenade launchers, and chainsaws. And if that wasn't enough to make this more American, they brought in a 23 vehicle convoy with a tank, 20 utility helicopters, and 7 attack helicopters. Oh, you thought I was done? They also brought in B-52s, F-4s, F-5s, F-111s, and also a carrier which was offshore and a nuclear capable bomber circulated in the area. If you guess that the North Koreans didn't do anything, you are right. At number 9 spot we have videos of nuclear destruction. Okay, first things first, North Korea has no internet. Well except for high level officials and some schools, but that's pretty much it. This means their media spreads like a wildfire in a desert. The only thing that did catch fire is when North Korean featured a video simulation of a nuclear missile striking with what appears to be somewhere in the United States as you can see the flag burning by the end of the video. This video was unveiled during a military parade marking the 105th birthday of King Il Sung. This video caused a lot of controversies, especially when it came at a time when the tensions were super high between the US and the Hermit State. For reference, this was in 2017 and by that time North Korea had done a ton of missile testing and to make things more worrisome, North Korea test launched a suspected intercontinental ballistic missile into the sea this year. At number 8 spot, we have a betrayal at the death camps. North Korea is known for their cruel punishment and their horrendous living conditions. Put these two together and you have some of the worst death camps in the world. Just to give you a little bit of what happens on the inside, many of the prisoners were kept to the brink of starvation, they are forced to do physical demanding labor for hours, torture, subject to chemical experimentation, and sometimes prisoners would be randomly executed, sometimes because the guard didn't like them. One specific story from the mirror has Shin Dong-hyuk share his experiences in these death camps. When he was 13 years old, he overheard his mother planning to escape the camp. Since he was practically born on the camp, all he knew was to obey and report anything bad in the eyes of North Korea. So he ratted his mom out. He would then recall watching his mom and his brother being dragged out and publicly executed in front of his very eyes. The worst part about this is that at the time he believed he did good because he claimed this is the type of brainwashing he underwent at the camp. At number 7 spot we have Otter Warm Beer. Warm Beer was a student from UCLA and decided it was time to go somewhere outside of the box. He then went on a trip to North Korea through a Chinese company called Young Pioneer Tours which is still one of the biggest tours to this day. In the hotel he was staying at there was a forbidden floor but he went there anyway and stole a political poster off the wall. This was all caught on film. This is all because a church in Hawaii that he was a part of wanted him to do it. During his confession speech on February 2016 he said this. I have been very impressed by the Korean government's humanitarian treatment of severe criminals like myself and of their very fair and square legal procedures in the DPR Korea. This is a load of barnacles. Then on March that same year, he was convicted and sentenced to 15 years of hard labor. Negotiations happened, but it wasn't until June 2017 when North Korea released Otto. Except he was in a coma after taking a sleeping pill. It wasn't until he was flown out to the US where he passed away. After this incident, the US government decided to ban all American tourists from visiting North Korea altogether. Another reason not to visit this place. At a number 6 spot, we have North Korean ghost ships. Hundreds of abandoned boats from North Korea wash up on Japanese and Russian coastlines each year. Some of the vessels contain the crew's remains, but they're usually just a pile of bones. These ghost ships are thought to be a result of North Korean fishermen becoming lost at sea and dying from malnutrition or weather exposure. The ships are typically old and lack stronger engines, and I mean it's from North Korea, they're pretty much still living in the 1980s stuff. However, after an investigation was done, they found that these boats were actually sent out from China as a way for them to fish illegally in North Korean waters, which violates UN sanctions completely. Right in the humper list, we have Ryo Gyeong Hotel, sorry if I mispronounced that. This 105 star hotel in Pyongyang was completed in 1992, but by that time it didn't function as a hotel at all. The building was hollowless and had no windows which meant complete darkness 
on the inside. Kim Jong-un wanted this hotel to be the biggest and best hotel in the world, but it completely fell short from that goal. It still remains empty to this day. It's literally just a large structure just overlooking the city. And it's more scary to think that no one actually goes into that building. And in fact, this is the world's tallest unoccupied building. Now many theorists have claimed this building isn't empty and it harbors something more sinister inside. This may be a stretch, but online communities have mentioned that SCPs and other governmental projects are being kept secret in this building. Hence why it will never truly open up to the public. At number four spot, we have Room 39. Room 39 is a secretive North Korean organization that figures out ways to get funds for Kim Jong-un. This room is in a ruling workers party building in Pyongyang. The main goal of this room is basically to make sure that Kim and his family never run out of funds and most of these ways are through illegal means. Legally, they invest in many different precious metals and currencies and some companies, but illegally, which is where they make most of their money, they allegedly make their money through means of narcotics, human trafficking, and most famous, counterfeiting money. The North Koreans are so good at creating counterfeit US dollars that they created a super note, which is supposedly one for one of a US on dollar bill. Some people in the US have actually been prosecuted for distributing the money that was produced in this very room. This room also serves as a place for arms dealing where they usually sell to terrorist organization and dictators for money. At our number three spot, we have Kim Jong Il's tomb. His tomb is on this list because it just gives everyone other than North Koreans the utter creeps. The mausoleum contains the involved body of North Korean's late leader, Kim Jong Il, and it was open to tourists for some time. During that time, you could see the leader in this glass box with his body resting inside. Just a creepy sight to see in general let alone a dictator who causes people to suffer. At number two spot, we have the Shinshun Massacre. Now, before I get started with this one, this one is all up for speculation. North Korea has said this happened while the US has said it was falsified, but forget about what we care about, let's just care about the North Korean side right now. They claim that a mass murder took place in the 1950s during the Korean War. In the town of Shinshun, American soldiers supposedly took the lives of over 35,000 civilians in the course of 52 days. If this was true, this would make it one of the most deadliest massacres in history, but that's if. Now this event is memorialized in the Shinshun Museum of American War Atrocities. Yup, there's a museum on horrible violent acts. And some of the paintings in here are pretty disturbing. At our number one spot, we have an election. This one is probably the least scariest on this list, but the fact that people have no right to vote for their leaders is definitely terrifying for me at least. Voting in North Korea is actually a thing. When you're supposed to go in for voting, many people show up super early to show a sign of loyalty. But when they're there to vote, it's just mandatory to vote for the SPA party, otherwise known as the Supreme People's Assembly. There's also supposedly private voting booths, but seriously, what do you have to hide? If you do attempt to vote for someone else, the police will follow you and find any ways to incriminate you or declare you insane. Starting off at number 10, Loch Ness Monster. Of course, Nessie has to come first. From the beginning, it was Nessie who wanted me there. Nessie? You nicknamed my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster?! Almost everyone knows the story of the monster in the lake that people have been trying to spot for thousands of years. The first recorded spotting was in 565, but few have actually seen it. The world took an interest in this myth in the 1930s, when the first photograph was released claiming that this was the Loch Ness Monster. In 1933, Alec Campbell re reported a sighting by Aldi McKay of what she believed to be Nessie. Mr. Campbell's report described a whale-like creature in the Loch's waters, cascading and churning. Then in 1934, a British surgeon, Colonel Robert Wilson, claimed he took a photograph of the monster while driving along the northern shore of Loch Ness. I mean, we have only discovered like 5% of the water on Earth, so maybe there's something lurking deep down, but what do you guys think? Is she real? Is she all just a hoax? Now at number nine, Robin Hood. Legend has it Robin Hood was an outlaw living in the Sherwood Forest with his merry men. The first known literary reference to Robin Hood and his men was in 1377. And the Salon manuscripts in the British Museum have an account of Robin's life, which states that he was born around 1160 in Loxer Lee in South Yorkshire. Robin became a popular folk hero because of his generosity to the poor and peasants, and his hatred of the sheriff who enforced the forest laws. Some date his adventures as taking place during Edward II, but other versions say the king was Richard I. Robin had fought in the Crusades alongside Richard I before returning to England to find his land had been seized by the sheriff, which he wasn't too happy about. Coming in at number eight, Grindelows. You know, kind of like in Harry Potter. I know, how many Harry Potter references am I gonna make on this channel? Holy. Grindelows are supernatural creatures that appear in the folklore of England, mostly the Lancaster area. They are described as small, non-human entities with scaly skin, a greenish complexion, and sharp claws and teeth. 
and long arms with lengthy fingers at the end. They dwell in ponds and marshes waiting for unsuspecting children, which they then grab them with their strong grip and drag them into the waters. Grindelows have been used as shadowy figures to frighten children away from pools, marshes, or ponds where they could drown. Here at number seven, London Fog. On December 4th in 1952, smog began to cover London. The smog was present for five whole days and ended up leading to the passing of at least 4,000 people. On a regular Thursday afternoon, a high pressure air mass stalled over the Thames River Valley. Suddenly, cold air came from the west side and the air in London became trapped. The problem worsened by the low temperatures, which caused people living there to burn extra coal in their furnaces to keep warm. The smoke, soot, and sulfur dioxide from the area's industries, along with the stuff from cars and consumer engine usage, caused heavy smog to smother the city. By the morning of December 5th, it was visible across hundreds of square miles. It became so thick and dense that by December 7th, there was no sunlight and visibility was down to only five yards in many places. Eventually, all transportation came to a hold, but not before the smog caused several train accidents, including a collision between two trains near London Bridge. However, that wasn't the worst thing. The worst effect of the smog was the respiratory distress it caused in humans and animals, including difficulty breathing and vomiting. A high number of people in the area, numbering in the thousands, passed away in their sleep that weekend. Now, it's a little crazy to me that all this happened and so many people ended up losing their lives. Taking our number six spot, Owlman. A small churchyard in Mornan was a sacred spot long before the 13th century church was built there with views over the Helford River. Sightings of a flying creature about five feet tall, half man, half owl, with glowing red eyes, silver feathers, and crab-like claws have terrified tourists since the 1970s. Oddly, all but one of the dozen or so eyewitnesses of the Owlman have been girls or young women, most under 16. So is this a creature that lurks the night or is it a real person that wants to capture women and hurt them? Halfway number five, King Arthur and Excalibur. Still a relatively well-known myth, King Arthur and the Sword and the Stone is a myth of strength and honor. The legend goes that the magician Merlin placed the sword Excalibur in a stone and whoever removed it would be the rightful king. Then Arthur removed it and went on to defend the country against invaders, along with many other heroic tales. King Arthur is a central figure in English history, and though some of the legends surrounding him may not be true, we do have centuries of literature, so... I mean, in medieval times, this one doesn't seem too much of a stretch, but who knows. Number four, Black Shuck, or Black Dog. The legend is perhaps the most common local myth in Britain. Among the graveyards, by crossroads, in the darkest forests, lurks a fear stirred first in the early medieval times. In Suffolk, this calf-sized hound with glowing red eyes is a harbinger of doom and death. It often appears during electrical storms, such as the one that struck both the churches of Bungay and Blythburg on the same day at the exact same moment in August 1577 leaving scorched claw marks on the church door at Blythburg. And there were at least two fatalities. I mean, remember what I said about black dogs in top 10 TikToks that make you question reality? Which, check out the video if you haven't already, but I mean, I don't know. I love black dogs, but still. Coming in at number three, red caps. A red cap is a malicious and malevolent goblin creature. They are said to live in the ruined castles along the Scottish borders, murdering those who stray into their homes. They wear red hats that are dyed with their victim's blood and to keep their hats red, they must hurt others regularly because if they don't, they won't survive. You can't outrun a red cap and they will always catch you. I mean, go there and see if you can find one, but know that you have been warned. Here at number two, the Naklavi. It's said to be the most terrifying creature of Britain. Around the waters of Orkney lives a skinless human horse, a being of rage and pestilence. The Naklavi has a head of a man only much bigger. Some people speak of flippers on its legs. The sea-dwelling beast kills crops with its breath and makes livestock sick when it comes onto land. Smelling of burning seaweed and set to exact revenge on any helpless soul unfortunate enough to witness its arrival. Like many British monsters, it's said that if you want to escape from its demonic presence, you need to leap across a freshwater stream or river. Take our number one spot, Jack the Ripper. Jack the Ripper terrorized London in 1888, taking the lives of at least five women and disfiguring their bodies in an unusual manner, indicating that the killer had a very good knowledge of human anatomy. The culprit was never captured or even identified, and Jack the Ripper remains one of England's and the world's most infamous criminals. All five passings took place within a mile of each other, in or near the Whitechapel district of London's East End. 
from August 7th to September 10th, 1888. Now, despite having committed these heinous crimes and investigations claiming definitive evidence on their identity, his or her name and motive is still unknown. Starting off this countdown at number 10, the Singapore Stone. Did you know that Singapore has its very own Hercules? Known as Badang, a poor fisherman lived his humble life by the Singapore River. When he realized a water gin had been stealing his fishes, he set a trap to catch the spirit red-handed. He then confronted the captured spirit who promised to grant his wish in return for its release. Badang proceeded to wish for superhuman strength and was soon appointed court warrior by the Sultan of Singapore. Warriors from far and wide started swarming in to challenge the strong man, including India's Wadi Bajaya. The two dueled in a series of contests, and the last one saw them lifting a massive rock and throwing it towards the Singapore River. The rock was discovered years later at the spot where it was said to have landed, and not just that, there was an inscription on it, probably to commemorate Badang's achievement. However, only a fragment of the rock survives today. And as it's been said, the Brits blasted it to pieces in 1843. While it's housed in the temporary closed National Museum of Singapore, you can still see it online. Barely a meter wide, the Singapore stone is a fragment of a large sandstone slab that once stood at the mouth of the Singapore River, blown up in 1843 to widen the passageway of the river mouth. This fragment is believed to be over a thousand years old. Number 9, Red Hill. Red Hill has a bloody tail behind its name. As strange as it sounds, it all started with a swordfish infestation, where the sea creatures attacked unsuspected villagers and fishermen by the shore. An idea came out of using a banana tree trunks as a barricade to trap the swordfishes. He brought this up to the Sultan, who granted permission to proceed. The brilliant plan worked, earning him the respect and admiration of the villagers, but not the Sultan, who soon became envious of the attention. Out of jealousy, he ordered his men to rid the boy even taking his life by any means necessary. And so they did. The poor boy's blood flowed down the hill where he lived, staining it blood red. And so that's how it's said it's got its name. Number eight, Kusu Island. An island with an interesting backstory is Kusu Island, also known as a sacred site. The island is home to a Chinese temple and three Malay shrines. But do you know where it gets its name from? Kusu means turtle in Hokkien. And legend has it that a giant turtle transformed into the island to save stranded sailors and fishermen, victims of the stormy weather. The sailors and fishermen returned the following year and the year after with offerings to show their gratitude. From then on, people head down on the ninth month of the lunar calendar to pay their respects. Number seven, Radan Ma. Radan Ma is the name of the area between Taluk Bangla, Bukit Permi, and Jalan Burkit Mara. Sorry if I mispronounced any of that. As well as a couple of known landmarks around the city. It's also the name of a Javanese princess, Radan Ma Ayu. Her father was a warrior prince, her mother was a commoner, and their marriage was condemned by the Sultan. One day, while the warrior prince was away on an expedition, the Sultan ordered his men to burn their house down, killing his wife. Radan, however, was saved by a loyal servant. Upon his return, the devastated warrior prince left the Javanese kingdom for Temasek with his baby daughter. Soon after their arrival, the Sultan of Temasek arranged for the warrior prince to marry his daughter, similar to the tale of Cinderella. Radin's new stepmother wasn't a big fan of hers. The plot thickens when the adult Radin was to marry her stepmother's nephew, whom she refused. Not liking her decision, he attacked her main man in life her father. In an attempt to save him, Radin was hurt in the process, receiving a stab in the heart. It's said that her body is laid to rest at the foot of Mount Faber, where there's a shrine in respect of her loyalty. Number six, Island of Death. Plaumati, or Island of Death, was a former name of Sentosa. While no one knows exactly just how the island got its morbid name, it's been said that the island was once a place of piracy and bloodshed. Other reasons behind its name include the location of the island which was adjacent to Palu Brani, which was the burial ground for many ancient Malay warriors. Then there's a tale about a deadly outbreak called the Bukang Mati Fever in the late 1840s, which almost wiped out the original Bugis settlers on the island. In 1972, Palu Mati was renamed as Sentosa, or Peace and Tranquility, leaving its past behind. Today, it's a beach resort known as the State of Fun. Halfway number five is Singapura. Sang Nila Utama, or Sri Tri Buana, was once the ruler of the Shivajaya Empire at Sumatura. According to legends, he went on an expedition in the late 13th century and discovered an island with a white sandy shore. After learning that the place was called Temasek, Sang decided to cross the waters to reach this newly discovered land. However, a storm appeared out of nowhere and nearly swallowed the boat. 
in a desperate attempt sang through his crown into the turbulent waters. The weather and the sea immediately became calm, and the crew reached Teluk Blanga safely. As they landed, a strange beast was spotted from afar. Upon hearing that it was a lion, Sang was overjoyed and decided to name the island Sigapura, or Lion City. The discovery was said to have happened in and around AD 1297, and Sang went on to rule for 48 years before his passing. His palace and burial ground was located on top of Burkit Larangang, or Forbidden Hill. Number four, Sisters Islands. Lying south of Santosa, Sisters Islands refer to Palu Sabar Darta and Palu Sabar Lut. Many years ago, there was a pair of sisters, Mina and Lina, living by the southern coast of Singapore. Being very attached to each other, the sisters vowed to marry two brothers so that they could live together always. However, one night, Lina ran into a group of pirates by the sea. Stunned by her beauty, the pirate chief was determined to marry Lina. When the dawn broke, the pirates came and abducted Lina to their ships. Weeping over the loss of her dear sister, Mina came swimming after the boats. The stormy waters were merciless, and she was doomed eventually. In a desperate attempt, Lina broke free and dived into the sea. The next day, a pair of islands appeared where the sisters had drowned. They were named Sisters Islands by the villagers in memory of the two girls. And legend has it that the next day, after the storm had subsided, Sisters Islands had appeared in the position where the two sisters were last seen. Number three, Underwater City. Legend has it that Sang Nila Atuma was the child between an adventurer king and a princess of an underwater kingdom, like we talked about before. Supposedly, Sang's father Raja had a glass case created for him to descend into the sea because he was curious about what lies beneath the calm waters. He sank into a country called Dika and was greeted by a race of men, and was later taken to meet the ruler of this underwater wonderland. And that's exactly how he met Sang's mom, Princess Mathabu Labari. This world under the sea, however, is scarcely ever mentioned in history books. Number two, the Merlion. One night, the villagers living by the southern coast of Tessamek were awakened by the howling winds and crashing waves. The dark clouds blocked out the lights of the moon and the stars, turning the world in complete darkness. It was as though the island of Tessamek would be sunk by the raging sea. The terrified villagers got down on their knees and prayed. During this moment, a bright light was observed emerging from the southern waters. A massive creature, half lion, half fish, roared in anger. The battle between the fierce mythical animal and nature was intense, as the sky was filled with flat flashing lightning. The villagers had never witnessed such terrifying phenomenons before. After some time, the winds began to die down. The waves subsided and the sky started to clear. The gigantic sea beast had won the battle against nature. As it claimed its victory, it stood proudly on Sentosa. By morning, the Merlion had retreated into its waters, leaving behind a bright, colorful trail. Number one, ghostly passengers. This story originates with taxi drivers, specifically ones who have had the eerie experience of picking up late night passengers who asked to be dropped off at a cemetery. Usually, the protagonist in the story is a beautiful young woman woman waiting on a remote road for a taxi. Once she's in the taxi, she doesn't speak again and wordlessly hands the driver money when she arrives at her destination. In the morning when the driver looks at the money, it's hell notes. Money burnt as an offering have replaced the Singaporean bills. Starting off this countdown at number 10, the Meg. Researchers have pinned the date of the Megalodon's extinction to about 2.6 million years ago, roughly when the Great White Shark was just becoming established. However, a doctor pointed out that the Megalodon likely lived in water no more than 200 meters deep, in and around coastal areas. We would, she says, have noticed something of the Megalodon's size if it was swimming off our shores. But what if that's not where it's living? Explorers began to probe the Mariana Trench in the late 1800s using rudimentary equipment, but it was impossible to get the full picture of the trench without sending someone down. That's only happened once in history. In 1960, a researcher and US Navy lieutenant took a Navy submarine into the depths. Due to the pressure, they couldn't stay very long. But when they turned on the submarine's floodlights, they were shocked to see fish. Until then, it was thought that no creature could live in such a harsh environment. So who's to say the Meg couldn't live down there? Over the years, reports of Megalodon sightings have emerged all over the internet. A lot of them claim that these giant sharks never went extinct. That they've just been hiding in the deepest part of the ocean. The Mariana Trench. Now at number 9, New Whale. In 2016, marine biologists studying the Mariana Trench heard a strange sound of unknown origin and started recording. Although the recording is only a few seconds long, experts detected a slightly metallic quality to it, and many speculated that the noise was not natural. After months of analysis, however, the scientists believed they found the source of the noise, 
It's currently theorized that the sound which marine biologists call a biotwang is the low frequency call of a new type of baleen whale. However, that's just one theory. Others say it's still a whale, however, it's got shark-like teeth and has mutated into something unimaginable. Here at number eight, sea devil anglerfish. If a fish has the word devil in its name, it's a safe bet that it's going to be freaky and sea devil anglerfish does not disappoint. It features a whole list of interesting, strange characteristics. As its name strongly hints, this is a fish that would have swum up straight from hell with its weird body, razor-like teeth, and cold death stare. Although they're bizarre and scary looking, at least they're not huge. Females generally top out at eight inches long and the males are much smaller, at maybe an inch long or so. As an anglerfish, the sea devil doesn't dart after its prey. Instead, it has a protrusion from its forehead that dangles a glowing lure to attract unlucky animals. With its huge gaping jaws, the sea devil can actually devour creatures larger than itself. We believe that this is the first video footage ever made of this species alive and at death. The eyes of this angler are quite small. In their dark habitat, anglerfish rely more on feeling the movements of other animals in the water around them than on vision. The tiny pale dots you see along the sides of the fish and on its head are organs very sensitive to the slightest movements and they function very effectively. Now coming in at number seven, goblin shark. The goblin shark is a rare species of shark. Its unusual and creepy appearance is often described as fossil-like. It has pink toned skin and a distinctive snout shape. It is elongated and flat with a protruding jaw and skinny, incredibly sharp teeth. They can grow to be about 10 to 13 feet in length and they are rarely seen by human beings. It's still unclear what the unusual snout is for, but the older they get, the deeper they dive. Most goblin sharks are 10 to 12 feet long, but they can grow much bigger. Here at number six, telescope octopus. The telescope octopus is a transparent eight-armed octopus that is almost entirely colorless. Their arms are the same size and they are the only octopus to have tubular eyes. It is incredibly unusual to observe and was originally documented by Dr. William Evans in 1885. The octopus is a rare species, meaning there is little that scientists and the general public know about the marine creature, but it's believed to be a close relative of the glass octopus. These eyes provide a wider peripheral vision so that the octopus can see predators and prey alike. Those eyes can also rotate. Talk about scary. Halfway at number five, fang tooth fish. These fish could be straight out of a horror movie and are named after their scary teeth that in relation to their body size are the largest in the ocean. Special pouches on the roof of its mouth prevent the teeth from piercing the fish's brain when its mouth is closed. Fang tooth fish do not have good eyesight and they are believed to hunt by literally bumping into their prey, sensing vibrations and movement in the water. Now at number four, deep sea hatchet fish. There are a lot of odd looking fish in the sea, but not many of them resemble humans' hand tools. The deep Deep sea hatchet fish resembles a silvery swimming hatchet. There are more than 40 species of hatchet fish. All of them have ridiculously skinny bodies and many of them have shiny scales too, which adds to the metallic hatchet-like appearance. They are small fish and even the biggest types to grow only to about six inches long. Their delicate looks contradict their serious ruggedness because these fish are found in depths pushing nearly 5,000 feet. Hatchet fish have bioluminescent bodies and they can alter the brightness of their glow depending on how much light is filtering from above. In doing so, they're counter illuminating their bodies in a clever camouflage technique. Their dim self-produced light reduces their silhouettes, making it much more difficult for predators to spot them from below. Now at number three, comb jellyfish. The comb jelly is a beautiful oval shaped animal with eight rows of tiny comb like plates that it beats to move itself through the water. As it swims, the comb rows break up light to produce a shimmering rainbow effect. Comb jellies are gelatinous creatures with luminous body structures as they diffract any light that falls upon them. They use their comb like plates to move around in the water. While they please the eyesight, these underwater marvels are vicious predators, even attacking their own kind sometimes. Some may be as tiny as a few millimeters, ranging up to nearly five feet long. Found around 3,000 feet down are the comb jellies. That's light refracting off thousands. Here at number two, frilled shark. The frilled shark was discovered in the 19th century by a German who studies fish. It is often referred to as a living fossil due to its eerie appearance and the shape of its mouth. The shark has an eel-like body that's dark brown and gray in color and the articulation of the jaws to the head. The shark derives its name from six rows of frilly gills that grace its body, which grows up to six feet long. 
Just as notably, the shark wields more than 20 rows of wicked, trident-shaped teeth that will tear into any bit of flesh that passes near them. Furled sharks probably spend most of their lives near the ocean's bottom, and they like waters more than 4,000 feet deep. On the rare occasions that people snag them and bring them up to the surface, the sharks almost always perish immediately, making it very difficult for people to observe their behavior and life cycles. For years, many people assumed that frilled sharks swam and hunted like eels. Now coming in at number one, zombie worms. Now I know what you're thinking, oh well how can a worm be scary? Well let me tell you. Zombie worms are also known as osidox. The word osidox means bone eater in Latin and refers to the worm's ability to dig into and eat bones from whale carcasses. They do so in an attempt to reach lipids enclosed in the bone. They use special root tissues for bone boring. So if you ever come near one of these things, I suggest getting as far away as possible. At a number 10 spot, we have the Torch Lake Monster. This one is pretty much well known all over Michigan, but for those who don't know, the tale of the Torch Lake Monster dates back to the early 1960s and 70s. Obviously, it takes place in Torch Lake, which is located in North Michigan, and it also is the second largest lake in the state. A fisherman and coach by the name of Dave Foley is credited with spotting the creature first and telling the stories of it since he worked by the lake for a while. Legend goes that the giant creature has a lizard's body, the head of a cat, one brown eye, and one blue eye, along with slimy green skin. The lake is approximately 285 feet deep, which makes what lies underneath much more scary and worrisome. Nighttime is when this creature is said to arise from the depths. At this time, many swimmers and boats go missing, only to wash ashore with no evidence of its demise. At a number nine spot, we have the Singing Sands of Beat Gris. Located just past Lac La Belle, Michigan, is a beautiful white sandy beach known as Beat Gris. In a direct translation, this means gray beast, and that's because a large gray creature was said to have inhabited the area many, many years ago, but that's not even the story I'm gonna talk about. Local legends claim that the pure white sand of the beach sings by pressing down your palms on it, or it barks when you strike it. The sound is said to be the voice of a Native American maiden who lost her lover when he drowned in the Great Lakes, and now she calls him on shore. The sand is said to lose its magical singing power when it's removed from the beach. Now visitors claim to hear the singing sounds, but as many try to bring the sound back home, they are met with years of unlimited bad luck, which lead many to bring it back to the beach to allow it to sing again. Other than sand that makes sounds, at a number eight spot with the Belle Isle's Lady in White. In Detroit, Michigan, there's an island called Belle Isle. This 982 acre island is used for picnics, hikes, and home of the only marble lighthouse. Other than that, everything else on this island is shrouded in mystery and up for speculation. Legend of the island follows the story of a chief daughter and a haunting bridge. The chief was concerned that his daughter's beauty would attract vast amounts of suitors. So to combat this, he made a deal with the snake goddess of the island. The chief asked the goddess to protect his daughter. The goddess would agree, but not for nothing. She would ask for the daughter to live out the rest of her days on the island to protect it, never being able to leave it. And to this day, the daughter is said to stay on this island and walk it with many visitors reporting that she would try to lure them into the forest by telling them that she is looking for someone and just needs help. She supposedly take her victims to the bridge to drown them and it's said that if you go on this bridge and honk three times she will appear just before your eyes. At number seven spot with the Nain Rouge. It's said that since the city of Detroit was founded in Michigan, bad luck has befallen the area. This is all because of the devilish red imp known as the Nain Rouge had cursed the entire city. Local folklore suggests that the Detroit's founder Antoine de la Moth Cadillac was warned by a fortune teller that he would come face to face with the Nain Rouge and to treat him with the most utmost respect and attention. Except this information came straight straight this year and right out the other because when he finally met with this creature, he hit it with his crane and told it to stay out of his way. This is when the angry Nain Rouge cursed the city of Detroit and Cadillac. Shortly after this, Cadillac would lose his fortune and move back to France, but misfortune still occurred in the city. It's said that in all of the disastrous events that happened in Detroit, the Nain Rouge could be spotted just before all of them. For example, in 1763, 50 British soldiers perished from Native Americans, after which the Nain Rouge could be seen dancing in the aftermath in joy. Then in the surrender of the war in 1812, the Nain was blamed again for its presence. It also been seen during Detroit's riots of 1967 and 1976's ice storm that caused electricity to go out for days. At a number six spot with a Masonic temple. Currently standing as the largest Masonic temple in the world, it also stands as one of the most haunted places in all of Michigan. The temple designed by George D. Mason is an imposing gothic structure at the corner of Bag Street, later Temple Street, and 2nd Avenue across from Cass Park. The temple has over a thousand rooms, secret stairways, and concealed passages but unfortunately Mason would go a little too far in this construction where it would cause him to go bankrupt eventually losing his wife in the process. His depression slowly kicked in and then he would jump off the roof of this temple to his death and to this day security guards claim to see old George's ghost climbing those steps to the rooftop. Visitors also reported many noises such as doors and windows being slammed shut. They also see moving
removing shadows and experience cold spots all around the area, all while feeling as if they're being watched by something. Right in the hub of our list, we have the Michigan Triangle. Well, guess Michigan has their own version of Bermuda's Devil Triangle, and it contains just as much unexplained phenomena as Bermuda. The triangle is from Manawak, Wisconsin, to Ludington, to Benton Harbor in Michigan. It was in early spring 1937 when Captain Donner was just managing his freighter ship called the OS McFarland through these icy waters. He was so tired, so he decided to go to sleep and ask for one of the crewmates to wake him up when they approached shore. As they did, they noticed his room was locked, so they looked around, but nothing. They then kicked the door down and found that he vanished with no signs whatsoever. Now the triangle claims the lives of many ships and planes just like Bermuda. People have also sighted the OS McFarland, but as they try to get a closer look, it disappears into the waters. An odd thing about this place is when that divers go to check the wreckages of ships and planes, they notice that everything is still intact including the bodies of the deceased and the ship as a whole. This is by far the scariest triangle because there is no way around it other than land. So basically, there is no point in traveling in Michigan's Great Lakes. At our number four spot is Hell's Bridge. Back in the early 1900s, an old deranged man named Elias Frist led a group of kids to the bridge and proceeded to murder each and every single one of them, slowly throwing them into the river below. Eventually, he was caught and hung by the towns. Before he passed away, he made a confession claiming that he did this because he was possessed by the devil and they told him to do it. To this day, a lot of visitors to the bridge hear the screams and the cries from the children just before they pass away. People have also said that when they get home from this place, they find bruises on their body as if someone was reaching out to grab them or hit them. The worst part is that if you walk on this bridge at night, you can feel hands below you as if they are grabbing you from the river below. And at the end of the bridge, you might encounter Elias as a dark figure with glowing eyes, so you won't miss him in the dead of night. In more lesser known news, apparently you are able to sell your soul to the devil by meeting the devil in the middle of this bridge. I mean. It's called Hell's Bridge. What else did we expect? At our number three spot, we have the Dogman. The Dogman is described as a seven foot tall, amber eyed, bipedal, canine like creature, and he has a head of a dog with the body and torso of a human. Ever since its original sighting in 1887, many, many more sightings were spotted all over Michigan. It's primarily spotted in the northwestern quadrant of the Lower Peninsula. Back to its original sighting back in 1887. This is when the Dogman was discovered by two lumberjacks who saw this creature in the distance. Things got a little more concerning when in 1937, Robert Forney was attacked by five wild dogs, describing that of one of the dogs allegedly stood up like a bipedal and was significantly larger than all the other dogs. This legend got more popular when disc jockey Steve Cook recorded a song called The Legend, which describes the Michigan's dogman. Although the artist claims it was made for an April Fool's joke, this kickstarted the entire legend and sightings of the dogman would only rise after the song was released. At a number two spot with Melonhead, locals fear of humanoids called the Melonheads. First theorized in the 1970s, Melonheads are said to be completely bald with misshapen bulbous heads, deformed arms and legs, teeth like daggers, and luminous red eyes. Legend goes that Melonheads reside around Felt Mansion, which is home to Dora Felt, who is an American inventor. The Melonheads were said to be the children suffering from hydrocephalus, which causes your head to expand in some cases. They were located at the junction in St. Asylum near the home, and it's said that they endured months and months of abuse, and that one day they decided to escape and run into the forest of Michigan, where they became animal-like and very feral. Many of these Melonheads are said to be looking for the doctor who failed to care for them in order to take his life. At a number one spot, we have Aloy Psychiatric Hospital. Located in Westland, Michigan, it was named after Detroit's postmaster, Alois Davik. In 1839, it started as a poorhouse and a farm where the poor, the sick, and the needy would go for shelter and work. As time went on, the poorhouse transitioned into a psychiatric asylum and hospital. The buildings were self-sufficient, even having their own police. They were even one of the first hospitals in the world to use x-rays for diagnosis, so at least one good thing came out of here. At its peak, the place housed over 10,000 patients and over 2,000 staff members. After its closure in 1984, the hospital's abandoned grounds are said to have a few patients still left inside of it. Ghost patients, that is. There have been reports of people finding medical waste and other strange items. Some have reported finding jars containing human body parts, as well as documents outlining strange medical procedures. 